أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلواتهم يحافظون أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يرثون الفردوس الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ثم أما بعد We were up to the ayat about guarding one's privates والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون And we made the intention إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين That we're going to discuss some of the lessons in this ayah بإذن الله today And specifically in regards to married couples and the issues they're in that are big problems in the Muslim community nowadays and simply because the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal is being ignored in these matters in the home. I mentioned this at another dars, but I want to reiterate it. A lot of times what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals as universal guidance, when you share it with somebody that has a specific situation, the first thing that comes to their mind is, I know the ayah is there, but it doesn't apply to my situation. I have a special circumstance, right? The ayah is great, it's beautiful. But it's, you know, I understand that that's there, but you need to understand my specific situation. And this is the attitude that the, the prescription and the guidance and the solutions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided, they are theoretical and maybe they apply for everybody else. But for me, you have to give me something different, you know? And so this attitude, we have to shave off this attitude. And we have to develop the attitude that Allah's solution subhanahu wa ta'ala is the solution. What He subhanahu wa ta'ala offers is brief, is concise. It's sometimes it seems like that solution is too easy to be right. It's too simple to work. But subhanAllah, that's the beauty of this deen. Simple solutions that help move the most complicated problems and, and solve them and, and take care of them. So the thing that we wanted to share today insha'Allah ta'ala are the words إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ These are the people who are in regards to their privates, they guard them, especially in regards to their privates, except where they are rightfully allowed to have pleasure with, you know, have intimate relationship with who? With their spouses or what their right hands possess. And I'm going to leave the right hands possess part for the end, inshallah. Because that's an academic discussion, we really shouldn't be bothered with it too much nowadays. Because it's, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody here has anybody that their right hand possesses. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, let's, let's talk about what is most relevant within our context and then discuss that. Usually, most of the time when Muslims ask about the possession of the right hand, it is, how come Allah said that? How do we tell the non-Muslims about this? Right? That's basically what it comes down to. First of all, even that attitude in and of itself is incorrect. We're not here to explain or, you know, do away with the flaws in the Qur'an ma'adullah. The Qur'an is flawless and the deen is flawless. Right? So the urge shouldn't be to, you know, let me tell you, it's not so bad. Let me reconcile it for you so you don't feel so bad about it anymore. Because that's, not, that's really not the issue. You know, the people who raise criticism against our deen, they will come up with things like polygamy and, you know, uh, the, the concubines and the women in paradise, the hur al-ayn in paradise, right? And they'll come up with violence in the Qur'an and etc., etc. It just the list just goes on and on. The male versus female witnesses, most of them having to do with the feminist movement, if you, if you think about it, right? But when you respond to one criticism properly, guess what? They'll say, oh yeah, let me come up with another one. 
And then you go and respond to that one and then they'll come up with another one. And then you respond to that one and they'll come up with another one. So you have to understand to play the game a little bit. And the way we understand to play this game is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, He responded and rebuttaled Bani Israel who were very good at asking questions. And Allah quotes a lot of their questions in Qur'an. They ask this, the Messenger answers. They ask that, the Messenger answers. Until it reaches the saturation point, and they ask after that, and the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam is told to give them the most stern of the answers. Right? They ask about Dhul Qarnayn, find the answers been given. They ask about Taruh, find the answers been given. They, they, you know, they ask about the people of the cave, the answers been given. They ask who gives you revelation, the answers been given. They keep, how do you have a boy sometimes? How is there a girl born sometimes? Go ask your Lord this, the answers been given. And then eventually they ask again, أَيْذَا كُنَّا عِظَامًا وَرُفَاتًا إِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثُنَا خَلْقًا جَدِيدًا This is even asked by the, some of the Bani Israel. Are we going to be raised again even though it's in their revelation? This is in Surah Al-Isra. And Allah this time, you know what? That's enough. قُلْ كُونُوا حِجَارَةً أَوْ حَدِيدًا Tell them even if you turn into rocks or iron, you're going to be returned again. So it's, a, you know what the response is? You know what? Enough with your questions. Because the intent of the questions are tangents. Because you know the if you if you watch media, which I don't recommend, but if you watch media, what happens is the interviewer is in charge of the discussion. Why? Because he's the one asking the questions. The one who's answering the questions is in a defensive position, and the one who's asking the questions is in an offensive position. And obviously the one in the offense is winning. Right? So you will find, even if the interviewee, the one being interviewed, has the best answers, as soon as he gets a good answer, the interviewer can change the subject and ask another tough question, or go to another controversy, to make him feel like he lost. Right? He has the last laugh. Now look at the dialogue in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly, constantly, He poses questions to the people. مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ أَمْ لَكُمْ كِتَابْ فِيهِ تَدْرُسُونَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Questions, questions, questions. He's changing the direction of the conversation, so the dialogue is in control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Nowadays, if you compare that to our times, what's happening? Who are, where are the questions coming from? The Muslims or the non-Muslims? The questions are coming from the non-Muslims, and we feel all the time that we're in a position to give the answer, and give the answer, and give the answer. So by definition, we've already lost this dialogue. You follow? The Muslim is in a winning position when he learns and she learns to ask the questions. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us much more burning questions than anything that can be asked of the Muslims. We respond to them with dignity, that's fine. But as a dialogue, we're supposed to be the ones in a position of asking questions. After all, we're not the criminals. The people who defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are engaged in a crime. The people who commit shirk are engaged in a crime. The people who commit zina are engaged in a crime. The people who are killing unjustly are engaged in a crime. So the Muslim is being made to look like the criminal. And so he feels like maybe I should respond because I need to prove that I'm innocent. You already know you're innocent, you're Muslim. <laughs> you know, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you believe in the Qur'an and the sunnah. You know, it's, it's what teaches you what innocence is. And as opposed to what everything else is. So it's a, it's a shift of mentality. So I'm going to address that malakat aymanukum issue at the end, bi'idhillah. So now we turn to this idea of, you know, uh, guarding one's privates within marriage. Before a young man gets married in our times, 